Welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. I am joined alongside special guest Darnell Mooney Season on Instagram, a.k.a. Zach. You guys might know him. Go follow him. He's got the best Darnell Mooney account on the gram. We've been trying to get this episode going for a while. It's Darnell Mooney Season every single season. So happy Friday, everyone. It's week six of the NFL season, and our Chicago Bears are taking on the guys up north, the Green Bay Packers at Soldier Field at 12 o'clock Central Time this Sunday at Soldier Field. The Bears can win this game. There is no doubt about it. There is there is a lot to go over here. The Bears have the ability to beat the Packers. That's something that the Bears haven't been able to say probably since 2018. But this year, we're feeling pretty confident. But before we dive into it, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. Stupid Car Tray always saves a day. Great for keeping things safe in your car, such as a, a Lumalnati's pizza, Chinese food, or anything along that. Get it while it's hot, folks. J16, use the code for 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. Zach, welcome to the show. Great to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about Darnell Mooney season. I know that you started it last year. Obviously, he was a rookie, but what made you want to start our Darnell Mooney stand account? Well, I've just been a person that, you know, being in Texas, it's kind of hard to talk Bears football with anyone around here. A lot of Cowboys fans, delusional Cowboys fans. Just It's just, I just can't talk to them. So I've always been wanting to talk Bears football. So having an Instagram account has been something that's been on my mind. And I was just looking for like an entry to it. And Darnell Mooney, I loved him as a rookie. He was hot with a lot of Bears fans. And I was like, hey, you know, I don't think there's a Darnell Mooney fan count here. So I think this could be my way in. So I made it the Bucks game right before the Buccaneers game last season, which was the perfect time to make it because we ended up winning that crazy ass game. I made the Darnell Mooney season fan account. And, you know, it's just just took off from there. So fun fact is that I started just another year Chicago way before the Bucks game. And right. I found Zach, I followed him and I said, Hey man, awesome account. Zach had like a hundred followers. <laughs> I go to check in like a couple months later, he's got like 4,000 and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> and he struck while the iron was hot. It's a great account. Great bears information. Highly suggest going to check it out on Instagram. His handle will be right below him. You guys can go and follow. So stay tuned for that. So Zach, let's get into a little bit of quick news right now. The bears are three and two and in second place in the NFC North behind the green Bay Packers who are four and one, and they are ahead of the Vikings who are two and three and the O and five lions. Now the bears can tie for first place and actually own first place. If they beat the green Bay Packers this upcoming Sunday, and before we jump into, you know, the breakdown of everything, what are you most excited about besides Darnell Mooney ripping up the Packers secondary? What are you most excited about, about the pack, the bears against the Packers this weekend? Well, what I'm most excited about is us finding our offensive identity. And that's something we've kind of lacked the past couple of seasons. And I'm a big fields guy too. And I want the bears to unleash them, but it's okay. If we take it slow, I'm okay with our identity being the run game, our O-line getting some push running with, Montgomery, when he comes back, Khalil Herbert, Damian Williams, that's a great RB group. So we already got a great defense. We just we just needed an offensive identity. And if we can keep building on the run game this this next game against the Packers, I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. Which is very possible. The Packers, though, on paper have a good defense. They are they have been exposed multiple times this season. So, I mean, go back and look at week one against the Saints. The Packers defense was absolute garbage. So, right. you know, before we dive into the breakdown of everything, let's just go through our injury report like we always do to start off episodes. Uh, Jimmy Graham was out as a resting veteran. Akeem Hicks with a groin injury did not practice again. So stay tuned for that. This report is coming out on Thursday. So stay tuned. Um, you know, we might not, this is coming out on Thursday. This is episodes being posted on Friday. So just keep that in mind. JP Holtz, uh, with a quad injury did not practice. Caleb Johnson, who suffered a knee injury against the Raiders did not practice either. He's a special team stud Khalil Mack. Now it's just his foot, no longer a, um, rib injury also is not practicing. Could be limited later in the week. Allen Robinson has an ankle injury. Now a lot of people didn't know that he didn't practice on Wednesday, uh, uh Wednesday on Thursday, it looked like he wasn't practicing either. Uh, Christian Jones, Darnell Mooney, uh, Damian Williams, and uh, Xavier Crawford, all, or I'm sorry, Xavier Crawford was not limited. So those three were limited and everyone else was back and healthy. So a lot of, a lot of healthy injuries, a lot of scares right there. Obviously the Allen Robinson one is new, but Darnell Mooney has been battling that groin injury all season so far and having a good year so far. So Zach, in, in regards to Darnell Mooney's injury, do you think it's really going to impact them that much against the Packers or do you want 
going against, you know, Adrian Amos is in that secondary. You got Alexander in that secondary. Do you think that the bears are going to kind of, you know, go away from Darnell Mooney against the pack? They should go always for him because he's a stud, but what do you think Mm -hmm. the bears game plan with Mooney is going to be? Oh, well, I mean, it depends on the injury, but like you said, he's been battling it. It's, it seems like a, a, not that big of a deal. He's played a couple games with it now. So, and you know, just had 120 yards past couple, a uh, couple games ago. I don't think it'll be too big of a deal. You know, obviously if the injuries injury um, gets worse, then I don't want them to force him in there. We have Goodwin. We have Demir bird. We signed these guys for a reason. We got some speed on depth, so don't force him in there. But you know, if Mooney, Mooney's good to go like he has been the past couple of weeks and absolutely go his way. We're going to need to take the top off that secondary once or twice this game. So, you know, I think we always got to look his way. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go into the bears offense real fast compared to the Packers defense. Obviously the bears offense on paper does not look good, but they have progressed over the last couple of weeks since Justin Fields has become the starter and bill laser has impacted play calling duties. Uh, so the Packers defensive ranking, they are six overall on paper. Uh, they are 11th in rushing yards given up, uh, 10th in passing yards given up, and total points scored, they are 18th. So that's where their spike is. But overall, they're six just because of the yardage percentage, which I th- or yardage amount, which I think is kind of crazy. And you have those stats, and then, oh, they're number six. So the Bears' offense, on the other hand, they are ninth in rushing yards, which is great, especially with David Montgomery being out. You know, you have Williams, you have Herbert that are stepping up, and then Ryan Knoll is likely to come up this week off the practice squad to be the third string running back. But the Bears are 32nd in passing. You also have to remember that the Bears had Andy Dalton behind the quarterback, which he did a fine job. But the Cleveland game, only 47 yards. That throws off the whole momentum of everything. So hopefully this week against the Packers, uh, you know, even though they are the 10th passing defense, hopefully Justin Fields can get some work in, you know, get to his open receivers. Bill Lazor kind of throws some deep balls to, to our speedsters. I mean, the whole room is fast, so you have targets. So the Bears overall passing 32nd total point scored 30th overall offense 32nd but it doesn't feel that way does it Zach like they they've gotten a lot better the last couple weeks and what do you think the stat line is going to look like against the Green Bay Packers defense yeah no you're right it hasn't felt that way and it should the Bengals and the Browns game just really killed us uh, with the stats especially the Browns game but yeah the past couple weeks against the Lions we put up 20 plus points that game. I think we had 24 this past week. We had 20 points against the Raiders. And, you know, if we, if you watch those games, no, this isn't a uh, nuclear offense by any means, but we've moved the ball. Okay. And it, definitely not the worst offense in the league, but uh, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, no. And then this week against the Packers, the, yeah, the defensive stats, six overalls, a little inflated. We know they're not that great. 18th in points allowed so that's not good we can we just need to focus on putting the ball in the end zone I think is the most important thing because against the Raiders this past week you know we didn't make a ton of red zone trips but uh, Justin Fields to JP holds for a touchdown and then Damian Williams rushing touchdown getting touchdowns in the red zone is extremely important and we just need to cash in on our opportunities this week against the Packers and if it makes you feel down to and if it makes you feel any better the Packers defense 13 times have been in the red zone and guess how many times they've given up a score Mm. all 13 times. Mm. So if the bears can get into the red zone, they're going to score. There's no doubt about it. Whether that be Carlos Santos, whether that be Justin field, whether that be Herbert Williams, whatever, it's going to work. Like the, the Packers are exposed. The Packers gave up 35 points in their first game to the saints against Jameis Winston. You would think, Oh, the saints drew Brees. No, Jameis Winston, who is a very not is a fine quarterback, but he's inconsistent. The Bears definitely can expose this Packers defense. They have before, and these guys have. And you said it earlier, the Bears offensive line is so much better in years than compared to years past. Jason Peters had that one really bad game against Cleveland, but. He four out of five games, he's done a fine job. Afedi is out on IR right now, so it looks like uh, Elijah Wilkinson is going to be playing right tackle for the Chicago Bears, but he did well against the Raiders too. So I think that, you know, if the Bears can do what they did against a tough Raiders defense ag- again this week against a, you know, on paper tough Packers offense, the Bears have a shot at this thing. I mean, the offense can definitely do it. Any, any last thoughts before we go to the Bears defense and Packers offense, Zach? Oh, yeah. I mean, with the Jason Peters and Elijah Wilkinson thing, yeah, we'll comment on that. Jason Peters, besides Miles Garrett, like it's just that was just bad scheming. You can't leave a 40 year old one on one with Miles Garrett, no matter how good <laughs> right. he is, you know. And but no, yeah, most of the time, Jason Peters, he's been our best alignment this season. Undoubtedly, he's been our best. And Elijah Wilkinson, when he filled in last game, he was good. He was very solid. The O line looks much improved the past couple of games. So I'm not too worried about that. 
And Larry Borum will hopefully, there has been no updates on Larry Borum. We know Tevin Jenkins is still recovering from that back surgery that he had, but Larry Borum could be coming back soon. He was only on a three week IR. There's been no really big updates, at least during the recording of this. Something could happen tomorrow in the morning on Friday or later this afternoon, Thursday afternoon. You, you, you know, I mean, the Bears have depth at the line position. Knock on wood, let's keep it up. But I agree with you that Jason Peters has been our best lineman overall. You know, James Daniels, pretty good. Good bounce back season. He was injured last year. Sam Mustaford struggling a little bit this year. But Cody Whitehair is just always, and, you know, I got to give a shout out to Cody Whitehair. He has mm-hmm. always just been the guy on the line to keep it together, even when times are so bad. Like during that losing streak last year, he was still so positive going up to guys. Shout out Cody Whitehair to that. So now let's go to the Bears defense versus the Packers offense. Packers offensive ranking is 22nd overall, which that's like, whoa. They're 22nd in the league with Aaron Rodgers. Yes, because their rushing is 21st, their, their passing is 16th, and their point scored is 13th. But here's the thing is that the Bears have the 12th, rush, 12th ranked rushing defense, 12th ranked passing defense, seventh points allowed, eighth overall. Now, when you see that 22nd overall for the Packers, everyone's like, how is that possible? It's 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 starting to get almost to midway through the season. The reason for this is because the only offense for the Packers really, when you throw Aaron Jones in there every now and then, is Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers' connection. They're the whole offense for the last couple of weeks for the Green Bay Packers. Zach, I mean, do you agree, disagree that the Bears defense can can well maintain these guys, especially Jalen Johnson going against Devontae Adams, who is the third ranked corner in the NFL right now? Yeah, no, I 100% agree. The Packers offense just hasn't been great this year. That's, that's just a fact. And Rodgers and Devontae Adams does carry that offense. When Rodgers needs yards, he's looking at Devontae Adams. He's not looking at anybody else. Marquez Valdez-Scanling has drop issues. He can't get open. Robert Tanyan had a fluke season. I called it out last year. He's not doing anything this season, too. He's he's not an issue. All we got to worry about is Devontae Adams. And Aaron Jones is pretty solid. Don't get me wrong. But he Aaron Jones isn't going to win the game for them. What's going to win no. the game? is Rodgers going to Devontae Adams. And that's that's just it. And those Bears defensive numbers, also got to say, very inflated in terms yes. of the yards that we're giving up. This offense against the Browns, they had an unbelievable game. Unbelievable. They gave up three points, uh, three points with two minutes left in the first half, and they gave up a run zone touchdown. And they can only hold on for so long. It's a great Browns offense. Our offense kept three and out, three and out, three and out. <laughs> you know, there's not much they can do about that. You got to, you got to give Sean Desai, you know, the tip of the, oh. the tip of the hat. He has done a fantastic job with this defense. And again, it's not much different. I mean, yeah, you have Robert Quinn instead of Leonard Floyd, and then you don't have uh, Nick Kowalski, you have Alec Ogletree, and then uh, you don't have Kyle Fuller, but you have, you know, the rotation of everyone else of Duke Shelley, you know, uh, you know, Kendall Vildor, Dion Bush, Tayshawn Gibson senior, like the bears defense is so good. And I agree. Eighth is inflated. I think they're a top three defense right now. You take away the Cleveland game. You take away the two big plays against the LA Rams, like the ones where the secondary was confused. Top three defense. There's no doubt. Easy. (laughs) Crazy. So, you know, let's go into our three keys of the game, Zach. I'm going to kick things off because I know that you have uh, the better takes of it all. So I just want (laughs) to, it kind of sounds like, what I said last week for our regular listeners, but last week I said my number one to my three keys of the game is get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. It is very possible. The bears front seven is scary good. And they are going to get, they're going to make Aaron Rodgers life. Hell soldier field warm out still kind of warm for bear weather on the lake. At least, you know, last, I mean, look at 2018 Rodgers had nothing to do and his offensive line is banged up. You know, Khalil Mack is having a good year. You know, he's had, averaging a sack a game right now. Robert Quinn is almost averaging a sack a game. You have Blau Nichols, Eddie Goldman, Travis Gibson, who's shocking the scene. And then Akeem Hicks hopefully comes back this week. That front seven is, or front four at least, is scary. Then you just Alec Ogletree and Roquan Smith is cherry on the top. My number two is avoid Adrian Amos at all costs. He is a Bears killer. Ex-Chicago Bear was drafted here. He loves to make the Bears known that he they should have taken him and paid him over Buster Screen. Couldn't agree more. I, Zach, I'm sure you know my hatred toward Buster. Buster you know, hatred's oh. a strong word. My high yeah. dislikeness of Buster Screen as an NFL football player. He seems to always seal the deal whenever, like the, the in, back in 2019, that pick in the end zone, 
you know, his oh, first man. game against the Bears as a Packer, of course, he ends the game. He's a Bears killer. Stay away from Adrian Amos at all costs. And then third, let Khalil Herbert go to work against the defensive Packer, the defense of the entire Packers team. He's fast. He's young. He proved he can get this done. They already have to worry about Damian Williams. Now they got to worry about Herbert. Who are they going to worry about more? Damian Williams, because he's an experienced vet. He's played the Packers multiple times. Khalil Herbert, let the young guy do what he's got to do. The door's open, run through it. So that's my three uh, key takes of the game. I don't think he's a one-hit wonder from last week against the Raiders. I think Khalil Herbert is legit. Very excited for his future with the Bears. Zach, what are your three keys to the game before we go into score predictions? Yeah, my number one key to the game would just to be you got to stop. You can't let Devontae Adams get 200 yards. That'd be my number one key is Devontae, like I said before, and it's just so important. They don't have any other weapons besides Adams. He is their one guy. Whenever they need something, just double team, just double team them. I'm okay yep. with giving up dump offs to Tanya and uh, Aaron Jones. I don't, that's not going to lose us the game. That is, that's, that's okay. My second key to the game would be to run the clock and keep the ball out of Rogers' hands. You don't want, last thing you want is, you know, end of the half or end of the game, give Rogers a game winning drive. Just keep the ball out of his hands. Try and work the clock. Let Khalil Herbert run. Let Damian Williams run. Just get push on their D-line and just work off from there. And then my, I'd say my third key to the game would be to uh, uh, work the play action game heavy because fields, we're getting a good run game the past couple of weeks. And the way you want to work off of that is just do heavy play action game. And we didn't do a lot of that against the Raiders. I thought against the Raiders were a little too conservative, a little too just run three times and punt, which ended up working out for us. Thanks to the defense, but we can't rely on the defense to hold Aaron Rodgers to nine points. It's probably just not going to happen. So work the play action game early and often try and get some shots down the field off the play action game. The Mooney are some of our fast guys. And just because you're going to need to put up points against Rodgers. And so the conservative play, just running the ball isn't going to work. Yeah. And what's crazy is that this could be Aaron Rodgers' last game in a Packers uniform at Soldier Field. So Mm -hmm. just wild to think, make it a good one, make it go out on a bad note on him. Great note for the Bears. Great takes, Zach. Really appreciate it. Before we, before we exit, before we go, and I actually need this for our post coming up in a little bit. I'm doing our score prediction post on Instagram uh, tomorrow. So editing that right after this episode. But Zach, what is your score prediction for this Sunday's game? I, I It's going to be a nail biter, but do you think, it, I, I think it's going to be a nail biter, but do you think it's going to be a blowout or same ordeal? You know, unfortunately I have to say, if it's going to be a blowout, it will probably be on the wrong side of it. I can't see any way we blow them out, but you know, I think it's, it's going to be a close game. The Packers, it, it sounds biased, but it's not. They're simply just not a four and one team. They haven't been playing as good as four and one. And their defense has been average. Their offense has been average at best. You know, I mean, obviously they still got Aaron Rodgers, but yeah, this team is pretty overrated this season. I think it's going to be an extremely close game. I got to take us. I take us 20 to 17. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> good score. Good score because yeah, I got no, 21 I 17 Bears. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. it, it's going to be very close, man. We're going to have, we're going to need Kyra to make some clutch kicks again. Hey, he's on my fantasy team. I need it. And what, when you said Devontae Adams can't have a 200 yard game, I was like, do I really have to put Devontae Adams on the bench just so <laughs> I can, because he's on one of my teams? Yeah. I, just to feel better about myself, I might have to. Just, oh, yeah. Jalen. Yeah. Jalen Johnson, they're, they're going to put Jalen Johnson on him. And Jalen Johnson is the, one of the best corners in the NFL. Hopefully Absolutely. it stays that way. This is the big challenge. This is oh, it. Yeah, it is. So Zach, thank you very much for joining this episode. As always, it was great having you on, you know, I know you're calling in from Texas. So thanks for representing, you know, bears Absolutely. nation down there. And I see Mooney in Texas. <laughs> you have to, you have to. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. So Zach, we'd love to have you on again. And thank you very much for joining the show today. Oh uh, yeah. It's great to be on. I'll always come on whenever you want. And you know, this was a lot of fun. I'm all, I'll always be down to talk bears football. That's absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. Bear down. Absolutely. It's always fun. So with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of just another year, Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. Join alongside Darnell Mooney season, AKA Zach, his handles below, and we will see you guys on Sunday.